Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 5, Episode 5 Thoughts. This episode is called Rewind. Another episode I love. Spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode. This episode is rated TV 14, so will this video be? Let's dive right in. So I appreciate that we get a brief Fitzsimmons moment before they go... Yeah, you know, for most of this episode, it's, it's Fitz and... You know, people in the present day, not the people in the future. And let's see. Yeah, you know, Fitz is, of course, caught. And they do the good cop, rad cop thing. I quite appreciate that, like, literally right after the, you know, He's led, you know, there's a, there's a Star Trek reference, and then General Hale walks in looking very much like Janeway. I mean, that had to be intentional. And, and the thing, you know, Alibi by Asimov. Great reference. And, let's see, you know, obviously the LMDs, yeah, moving on. Um, yeah, I appreciate that they, you know, they give him a polygraph, or take a polygraph, you know, so that, that is the, the smart thing to do under these circumstances to get answers. And, yeah, some montages of him solving things to get across, you know, yeah, it... And I also appreciate that, like, you know, before he knows, and of course they wouldn't tell him before they have to, he thinks that maybe he was the only person who blacked out for those two minutes. Maybe he did the, the traumatic memory of it. And, and you know, he's told, no, but everybody in the, the diner had those, that two-minute memory gap. So they're all in on, no. And do I look like Maga to you? Anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, a letter to a fanzine. And I appreciate that, you know, later on we learn, yeah, you know, he sent all these letters. It was because, you know, he knew that it would provoke Hunter. You know, this kind of, yeah. No, no more thinking. Oh, so you're going to work on the Inhumans show? And, yeah, um, the thing about how, you know, the reason it took Hunter so long was that the, they don't get that fanzine in the, the country he was hiding in. And, yeah, this thing of, you know, Fitz is thinking, okay, what was it? If you show up three times per month, then in four months, we'll have the whole thing. Or was it every third day or some, something, you know? Which, yeah, you know, if, if he's his lawyer, he has, you know, there's a... He has a right to... to but, but yeah, the... <laughs> that was a, a quite... What's the word? You know, of course, Fitz is going to think like that. Meanwhile, Hunter, you know, there was no escape plan in the coded messages, so, you know, yeah. Could you move a little to the left? And then he pressed a button, and Fitz stepped onto the, the trap door into the bottomless pit, for all intents and purposes. And, and the, the <laughs> Rusty's the best pilot money can buy, and then blows up, best pilot my money can buy. And, yeah, so ultimately Bobby does not make an appearance here, but they do make some references. It was really great seeing Hunter again. I still, you know, it, it really sucks that the, the spinoff didn't end up working out because it really did seem like a, a really cool, yeah, I, I I would very much have liked to to see it. Um, let's see, yeah, and and they 
they walk in, you know, they find Enoch, you know, the, the vehicle hid, but it was clearly the same vehicle, you know, it was just the, the cover, the, the outside of it that changed. And, and yeah, you know, they walk in, and Enoch is like, I've been expecting you, which, you know, because, of, you know, Robin's drawings, the, yeah, he knew that the, so, so yeah, very nicely done there. And, uh, let's see, then we have the, yeah, you know, he, 2091, Earth Year. Two zero nine one, so not twenty ninety nine, which you know, a lot of lot of pretty ridiculous, but pretty cool Marvel stuff that's specifically twenty ninety nine. I can't help but wonder if it's a reference that it's that close. And yeah, Enoch has been here for thirty thousand years, and. Let's see, right, and the the thing about you know Fitz didn't go with because he wasn't part of the prophecy, or he, you know the yeah the part where they that first group go, but he you know he's going to save them later. Hello, Polly. I appreciate the detail that Enoch apparently sustains himself entirely on. Coconut, you know, yeah, that, you know, alien. He doesn't need the same things that a human body needs. And I like that once they're looking at the, the you know, the, the two military people who are trying to catch Fitz, once they're, you know, standing there in the in the kitchen, one of them picks up an apple, takes a bite, and then the other one is like, oh, this is this is us. You know, there's, there's a drawing of, of them standing there. And I believe the, the guy even had the apple in, in hand, you know, little, little green, you know, round thing in, in the hand. Very nicely done. And... Yeah, and, and seemingly the... the you know, Fitz and the others disappear, and then they realize, you know, we lost 30 minutes. Which I, I quite appreciate because, like, yeah, you know, they did the same thing. Enoch did the same thing there that he did when he took the others from the diner. But there he only took two minutes because that was all that was needed. Here he takes 30 minutes to give them a head start. And, you know, and, and two minutes is quite reasonable. You know, they, they have to get these half dozen or so people out who are like frozen stiff you know they're, they're not like literally in ice but if you want to move that many people carefully yeah it's you know two minutes considering they, they also seem to have like half a dozen or a full dozen guys themselves you know if, if everyone pitches in at the same time yeah and love the transition to the lighthouse very cinematic you know holds up the postcard and then we go into the postcard and <laughs> i like how you know they they ask a bunch of questions and enoch keeps answering unknown and and as usual, they, they do a really great job with this thing of an area clearly has history it's not just there you know, just now briefly when it's useful. You know, the the place that like ah, what's the word? The the lighthouse is actually a ah hold on. You know, yeah, it, it feels like it's been around for a long time, even though, you know it it appeared in this episode, it might not appear in any future episodes. But it is just more compelling if it feels lived in. And yeah, I like when, when Hunter and, and Fitz are talking about his relationship with, with Simmons. And I can't help but feel like there's a... 
Robin kind of comes across as, as being on the spectrum, you know, really devoted to one thing, not great with, like, social interaction, you know, doesn't talk that much. And, you know, the, the thing that she does know, she's really, really good at, and can, you know, can really help others through that. And... <laughs> I appreciate, you know, Hunter points out, you're breaking one of the, the central rules of espionage. Never walk into the same place as two different people, which makes a lot of sense. And at the same time, it's like, what else is he going to, you know, they, they have to both be doing this and, uh, you know, yeah, it, it is this thing of, obviously, they can't go as who they actually are, and you know, it's it's maybe best the guard doesn't get too close of a look at Fitz since, you know, this is where he escaped from. And and Hunter shows up, you know, he says, We're here to fix a hole. Which is just polite, you know, if you if you damage somebody else's property, it's only fair that you take part in fixing it. And and he lays it on kind of thick, which you know, it's one of those things of like you know, the guard is, is like, if this was a spy, he would not be, you know, he's, he's making way too big. You know, I'm, I'm going to remember him later. He would not be doing that if he was a spy trying to hide. And, let's see. <laughs> yeah, they, they mentioned, you know, you could lose a limb from this, and it's, it's ferrets. Quite fun. And, and, yeah, you know, they're going to look for the, for the exits, which is gonna trigger the, the the alarm and seal them in. Very clever. Very cool shootout. It is pretty ridiculous that Fitz with you know dual wielding icers can actually take out these like trained military you know, he's he's outnumbered, he's outgunned. All he's got left is guile, and that should not be enough in this situation. And yeah, um, you know, Hale talks to the the two the people. She, you know, the the lieutenants. I think they are both are. You know, and she's like, I can't trust you anymore. And you know, the, the I guess she's called Lieutenant Evans. It's like you're demoting us. The good news is, you're not being demoted. You're not gonna like the bad news though. And yeah, the cryo freeze in orbit is legitimately a, a clever yeah, you know the he's gonna be out for about seventy years and then yeah that that really is it's very very because that's the thing you know he can't what was the thing they can't activate the the time travel thing can only be activated from the other side. And what was it? I think Enoch couldn't contact them. They contacted Enoch and told him the terms. So, yeah, cryophrase is basically the only thing. And <laughs> they had to. I love you. I know. And, yeah. As, you know, this, the, the post credit scene confirms, yes. The, the... Um, the bit we saw at the very, very end of the last episode, the, the, yeah, the, that post credit scene was indeed part of part of a plan, twelve percent. So yeah, really looking forward to seeing what the rest of the plan is, and yeah, so some IMDb trivia for this episode. The let's see. The RV that Fitz and Hunter are in is an early 80s bounder, the same model RV that's used in Breaking Bad. Yeah. And... Huh. Um, the cryo chamber that Enoch came to Earth in is actually slightly modified and repainted Thule Force XL XXL car luggage box. The real names of the two ferrets used in this episode are Salt and Pepper. 
When Fitz and the Hunter are searching for Enoch's capsule in the military warehouse, the wooden crate holding the Ark of the Covenant from Raiders of the Lost Ark, or losers of the Raided Ark, Raided Ark if they showed up too late, can be seen on the shelves nearby. And... So the hmm. yeah, uh, there's an incorrectly regarded as goofs goof. When fits in the group time warp, great reference. Only the soldiers notice the lost half hour of time, or no one notices the soldiers frozen in place for that half hour. However, device was said to work in a two mile radius. So people nearby would also be frozen, probably with everyone entering radius during that time. And that might be about. <laughs> yeah, I like Hunter's reaction to you know Fitz brings him up to speed. Just his hair self, huh? Nothing else. And the, you know, sexy robot thing. Wanted you to stick the old floppy into her love drive. And... Chasing a beer truck. I like this plan. I've been expecting you. What? Wait, no. We're here to surprise you, so act surprised. Right, and the detail that, yeah, Fitz specifically requested a TV to watch soccer. So the the letters to the fanzine, and they were probably watching him in the cell as well. So when he's, like, shouting at the TV, like, honestly, I can imagine it's probably, you know, he is actually, yeah, what's the word? The, the... Um, um, he does actually feel that way about that soccer player, but yeah, you know, that helps sell, you know, he's not writing these fanzine letters from memory, he's basing it on current soccer matches. You know, that is consi considerably more credible, like, the, the, and, and, you know, it's one of those things, no matter how hard you work, you have to sometimes unwind a little. And I think that is, yeah, I uh, should be able to do an episode tomorrow, really looking forward to it. I was sent here 30,000 years ago to observe and record the evolution of your species, which you would call an anthropologist. My Earth name is Enoch. I'm a sentient chromicon from a planet which revolves around a star in the constellation you know as Cygnus. Yeah, we'll just go with Enoch. 